What is DJ Ultra definitely in the building and right now we're brought to you by Just Water. I think it's the best water on the market. Um, you know, just the fact that you could actually save the earth with drinking it out of the um bottles that they have. So now on the phone I got a very, very important guest as always, but we stepping onto the sport and scene. Christian Camacho was good. How you doing, brother? How's everything? Man, everything is great, man. You know, you definitely have um, a, a nice record. Obviously, you come from a, a legendary family. You know what I mean? So let, let's get straight into it, man. Matter of fact, I, I got it back up. I got it back up because we have some females in here. They, they want to know what your status is, man. Uh, I'm uh, currently off the market. Off the market. <laughs> <laughs> I, got the, I, got, I got the child in the wife and a happy home, right? So try to keep it that way i like that i like that that's what's up that's what's up man you're definitely coming off a, a, a victory not too long ago i do believe it was uh july 20th um yes, sir. yeah man so let, let's talk about that fight man how, how did you feel going into that fight um that's probably a little tricky um every fight i've had so far i've been naturally the smaller guy and um you know i've been fighting for Stay behind my job and it made it a little trickier because he was more of a southpaw and um, I'm a right-handed fighter so a big guy southpaw was a lot and it's a lot of work but I got the job done and I'm gonna be happier. Nice, nice, nice. Now obviously, you know, you, you had your first fight ever since then. You just been, you know, just doing your thing, man. You know, you know what I mean. So is there anything that really changed from the first fight to, to now? Um, not necessarily. I mean, the first fight kind of taught me a lot about, you know more of the game everybody says it's a dirty game and I was with you know with no ill intent or nothing like that I was just taking advantage of just because of my name I was put in there with somebody who had 10 and 11 fights as a professional and no losses he was actually I think nine no I think he might have been nine and one or ten and one he had one loss so um and me taking my pro debut I mean it was a match but I held my own and I can't believe they actually uh gave the fight away but I learned my lesson and um, I came back with a different game plan and a little bit more uh, mature, let my body grow a little bit. And at that time, I was only 20 years old. So now I'll be 26 and I'm more of a man. I'm more, uh, I don't want to say I'm a man, but you know, I'm a little <laughs> bit more built. <laughs> a little bit more solid, got a little more tough behind the punches now. Ah, I like that. I like that, man. Now I'm asking you another question, man. This one might kind of go home. Um, basically, you know, I, I don't know if you're familiar with the contender. We we actually are. You know, we dealt with a couple people there. So you had Sugar Shane Mosley, uh, obviously one of the greatest fighters, um, and then his son Sugar Shane Jr. on. And obviously, like the last fight he lost, he couldn't really live up to you know his father's expectation. Now, obviously, your father was a legend. You know what I mean? So, it, uh, do you think that is is that like a lot of pressure on you? Like, how do you you know even go through your daily routines? Do you, do you think about how great he was, and you know everyone is gonna say you know what you gotta live up to that height, or do you think you're kind of like in your own lane? Um. Well, I've always you know I've, I've always tried to distance myself from trying to be compared to him, which would be damn near impossible. But you know that's just that's just be real. That's true that I can't feel. You know what I'm saying? So I'm okay with that and I've accepted that, you know. I I can say right now if I was to step into the ring with my father in the same weight class at the same part of his career as mine, my dad would put a whooping on me and I'm okay saying that, you know, <laughs> those aren't shoes I'm trying to fill at all. You know, I just definitely wanna just continue his shoes, you know what I'm saying? Continue the footsteps and let the name and you know, I want the name to mean a lot more than what it does right now. A lot of people here at Camacho, they, they know he's a world champion, he's a, a, a legend, and he's also a, a boxing hall of fame, but nine out of ten times they're talking bullshit about, you know, about all his wrongs and all the things that he's done wrong in his lifetime, and that's not cool, you know, so I definitely want to shed some light on Camacho name and, you know, turn, turn back the clock a little bit and let people know it's Camacho time. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Definitely. Like, I, I know my dad loved your dad. You know what I mean? So, like, my dad was definitely in, into boxing, still is. Um, loves coaching and everything. So, definitely, I, I'm I'm no fighter, but I'm a watcher. I'm a, I'm a solid watcher. <laughs> so, so, you know what? Definitely. We all, we all got to be students to get it. Definitely. 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 Now, let's say we talk about, man, um, from the, the records that I have, it, it says that you were born in New York, but obviously I know you're in Florida right now. Um, is, is there a reason why you moved down there, or you're there for just boxing? Well, 
it's a kind of, it's a kind of I'm not, I wasn't even born in New York, and I was not born in Florida. I was actually born in um, Chicago, Ohio, in, uh, in 1992. My dad was fighting um, Julio Cesar Chavez, and he was up in training camp in um, Chicago, Ohio, in the mountains, and um, Don King's training camp, getting ready for that fight. And um, my mom went up there for the 4th of July weekend, because every weekend, I mean, every uh, Independence Day, they do a big barbecue, all the fighters come out, and and they just enjoy, you know, Independence Weekend up there in the mountains. And um, it just so happens my, uh, my mom's water ran uh, first on the 4th of July. And I was actually born in a training camp, you know. And the first place I ever walked into was a gym. And uh, it just seems like I've never left since then. So even though I'm, 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 I live in a gym and I say I was born in the gym, I was really born in Ohio. And um, raised, you know what I'm saying, here from New York to Florida, New York to Florida. But... Orlando is really my stomping ground. That's really where I'm from. That's you know where I reside at now. I mean, I have a child out here. My mom was out here, and about uh, I don't know, I would say about 22, 23 years ago, my dad bought a house out here in uh, Dr. Phillips, right by uh, Disney. So I live on Universal and Disney property, and um, I just I don't know. I like the tourists. I guess we love it out here. The heat, you know, we don't got to worry about the snow or nothing like that. So. This is where I call home. Yeah, that's definitely got to be dope, man. That means that boxing is definitely your calling. You know what I mean? Definitely, definitely your calling. So, you do have a fight coming up this Friday. Um, like, what, what are some of your pregame routines? Or like, even when you come into the ring, do you get the jitters? Or is it like, you know, work as like business as usual? Like, you know, what is your routine? And how do you feel when you do enter the ring? Well, to be honest with you, I mean, this is, this is, uh, how can I say, um, uh, this is something that, you know, you can't prepare for, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't know if you know, uh, Mike Tyson said the, the loneliest walk is on your way to the ring, where you where you really just contemplate and think to yourself, what in the hell am I doing right now? And um, I can't prepare for nothing but by getting in shape and getting ready for a fight. Once I hear the bell, you know, it might take me 30 seconds, a minute to, to, get, to get ready and get my, my feet wet, but once I hear that bell, it's game time, whether I like it or not, so... You know, I could be shook, I could have the jitters, I could be nervous and all that, but that has to be all thrown out the window with this time of fight. Now, now tell all of our listeners who you're fighting and what, and what we could expect from this. Well, right now, uh, my opponent is Isaac Serta. He has a record of 6-1 uh, and 1. I believe 6 wins, 1 loss, and 1 uh, no contest, and 1 draw. Um, he's a tough cookie. He's a Mexican from Mexico City. Um, he's coming to fight. Um... He's had two months of training for me, so I know he's coming ready and shape and ready to fight. So this is actually a qualifier, so whoever wins this fight gets a qualifier uh, for an NBA or an NABF title. So this is a important one. It's going to be a tough one, and it's the uh, main event on Telemundo. So just excited, and I'm ready to showcase my talent. All right, now listen, man. Uh, we're definitely gonna have you on a lot, man. I definitely want to keep touching base with you, y'all. But this question, I definitely got to ask you, man. So. Just imagine right now, right? You are like the boxing commissioner. You could change any rule or make up any new rule. What is something that you would change or you will put into place to help make boxing the sport that I feel it should be? I think it should be like up there with football. And you know, everyone should be watching boxing. So what is something that you would, you know, put into place or you would change to trying to put boxing, you know, on the forefront of sports? Um I mean, there's a couple of things that come to mind. Um, I would definitely try to make it where it's like an equal pay, like a pension, maybe. You know, so when guys, you know, um, retire, they have something to fall back on. Um, maybe, you know, some type of health insurance and, and, and you know, some type of, uh, some type of health insurance for fighters, you know, because a lot of guys are the ones that are not being able to continue to fight. If you're going to talk about I would definitely say scoring and judging. I feel like a lot of these judges sometimes screw up my, you know, they, 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 excuse my language, but they, they piss on the sport of boxing where people think that, you know, boxing is a joke. And I feel like a lot of these judges should be uh, accountable for their, uh, and, and rest as well, but I feel like they should be accountable for their scorecard, whether it's a type of suspension for them or whether they should have some type of clinic a continuous clinic throughout, you know, maybe once every three months or something or so, where it goes from past fights that might have been judged 
um, wrong or improperly or whatever, and they have to come up with a new scorecard. And, um, and you know what I'm saying? Uh, all the judges get graded according to their, you know, their judgment. And um, I think that would be able to weed out a lot of, you know, a lot of the, I don't want to say bought or paid or, you know what I'm saying, judgmental judges, but, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of the judges that, like I said, just piss over the the boxing. I like that one. Yo, I definitely do like that one. You actually faded in and out a little bit, but um, I, I think that's awesome, bro. I think definitely think that's awesome. Matter of fact, I would love to even have you back on and we just talk about that right there because the refereeing is definitely one thing that a lot of people feel as if um, is detrimental to, to boxing. But, you know, like right now, I think, you know, right now it's a great time, man. Uh, I'm going to wish you the best of luck. You already know we're on your side, man. You got to do your thing. We'll be rooting for you. I'll be watching Telemundo and everything, man. <laughs> Drinking the just water. So, b- before you... Yeah, you Spanish, but it's not my point. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I can, I can hablo Espanol, man. I'm telling you, I can hablo Espanol. So, uh... That is, well, I guess you know more than I do. I speak a little Spanish. Oh, oh, yeah, I know more than you. I know <laughs> I know more than you, man. Especially listening to uh, another boy you might know, Casino, you know what I mean? So, um... Oh yeah, that's the homie. That's the homie. <laughs> so before you go, just um, you know, you, you give out any shout outs or any thank yous. You know what I mean? Well, first and foremost, I want to thank you, and um, I want to thank uh, the audience for allowing me to fuck some crap up on here. And um, I definitely want to thank Kenny, Kenny, uh, okay, my brother Kenny, Kenny Cream, the man, man. And um, I want to thank my trainers, Joey and Rashad, my mother, and. Uh, Telefundo for allowing me to showcase my uh, talents and um, just the, the promoter back in the All Star Boxing. You guys are amazing. And uh, number f- uh, first and foremost, I definitely got to thank uh, God, you know what I'm saying, for making everything possible. And um, just a shout out to my little daughter, my baby, for, uh, for being the one that pushed me to be great. So, Callie, I love you. Be the best. All right, all right, guys. Already know who that is, man. That is Christian Camacho. He's gonna be the future of, uh, champion of the world. You know, I'm, I'm putting it out there. I'm putting it out there. And I'm DJ Ultra, man. And we're signing out. But also remember, guys, to get a bottle of that just water. It's really, really good, and it probably helps the environment. Not even probably. It does help the environment. And we're signing out. <laughs>